This is The Sales Podcast, episode 368. With me, Wes Schaefer, your host, otherwise known as The Sales Whisperer. If you missed number 367, go check out Deepak Shukla's interview. He's an SEO expert out of the UK. Uh, Good dude, great information. Uh, And SEO is far from dead. But it has changed. It has evolved. Uh, And I've mentioned this before. Uh, a new service that I've got around optimizing for local search. I'll be talking about that a good bit in the coming months. Uh, but check that out, thesaleswhisper.com slash optimize. Uh, run a free scan on your business and see how correct are your listings. These local citations, reviews are so important. But I digress. I'll mention that later. Um, Today, we've got Jason Redman. He is a return guest, uh, retired Navy SEAL, shot seven times. Um, He's the author of a book. He's got a new book coming out. Uh, We get into that. Uh, He helped me years ago when I uh, first did the uh, SEAL week preparing for uh, my Tampa Bay Frogman swim when I was raising money for that. Uh, I'm doing the San Francisco Frogman swim in July, so I'll be talking about that in coming episodes as well. So get ready to dig deep and donate because uh, this goes to the Navy SEAL Foundation. It's a four-star organization. 100% of the money goes to those families. In episode 369, we have Sarah Worth. Uh, Sarah is an experienced coach helping sales managers be great leaders. Uh, we're going to discuss how you can increase your sales, enhance performance, sustain growth, Uh, We talk about what makes a great sales manager great. We talk about how to provide coaching and feedback so you get more out of your salespeople, what to do when they're not performing, uh, whether or not you should promote from within. So if you are a sales manager, if you aspire to be one, you want to tune in for that. Uh, And even though I said next week, uh, if you've noticed, I've changed up the production schedule here a little bit. Uh, I've just had a lot of great guests. And so I'm doing uh, six a month right now, basically two in one week, one the next, kind of like a Monday, Friday, then the following Wednesday, back to Monday and Friday. Uh, So it's working out right now. I got the team kind of dialed in, doing some new artwork, uh, sharing the videos on YouTube, uh, just trying to give you more ways to consume Uh, more content. I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter. Uh, Back in the day, some of these would go an hour or more. I'm trying to keep these in the 30 to 40 minute range. That way, if you listen at even one and a half speed, you know, you can get done pretty easily within 30 minutes. Certainly, if you listen at double speed, uh, you can get these done in in 30 minutes, uh, even with me pontificating a bit. Uh, But I've got the schedule lined up already. So I'm recording this intro April 10th. And um, I've already got guests scheduled out through uh, July 1st. I've got four more coming. That'll take me out to July 19th. So podcasting is far from dead as well. And you know what? The sales podcast is humming right along. And along those lines, I would like to introduce my first paid sponsor of the sales podcast. Uh, I've been talking with these guys for a few weeks, but about a month. I uh, had a concluding call yesterday with the founder, a uh, good dude, and this company is called uh, Rainmaker. They are focused in a few big cities right now, um, and you can check that out when you go to thesaleswhisper.com slash recruit. Uh, if you are a candidate, you can sign up for free, and it's a very unique service for salespeople that are looking for the right sales job. And it's a great platform for businesses that are looking to hire the right salespeople without paying through the nose like a typical recruiting firm. Um, the, some of the stats they've shared with me, the average time to hire is 20 days, 97% response rate, 6% candidate approval rate. Candidates are blocked from their current and previous employer. So if you're a salesperson, You don't have to worry about your current company seeing you uh, putting your resume out there. Uh, For employers, we only allow registration with company email. So you know these people 
uh, are legit. And it is the pricing model is revolutionary. Uh, and as a salesperson, you don't pay and the companies pay a much lower amount. Uh, so check out what these guys are doing. And again, it's Rainmaker uh, is the company. They've created a special page for listeners of the sales podcast. Uh, and you go to thesaleswhisper.com slash recruit. Uh, you can sign up for their newsletter. You can poke around. You can ask some questions. Uh, see if it is right for you. Um, in the next several months, they've signed up as a sponsor. I'll be sharing more case studies, um, giving you more examples of how they really help. But trust me, I wouldn't... Um, bring on as my first paid sponsor somebody that doesn't get the job done so again if you're in sales if you hire salespeople, uh, and go check them out i don't want to say the cities i don't want to uh, discourage you because they're growing quickly and they're growing into more and more cities but they're in a few of the big ones right now if you think you might be in one of those big ones go check them out all right and um and stay in touch if there is a big enough need and they're not in your city, they can probably accelerate the, the growth and development in that city. But they're growing smartly because they want to over deliver. Um, and they're doing that right now. So they've got a proven track record. The founder has a proven track record of uh, growing businesses successfully. So uh, you're in for a treat if you're in sales or if you hire salespeople. All right. So check them out. Tell them that Wes sent you. The saleswhisper.com slash recruit. Now let's bring on Jason. Jason Redman, all the way from Virginia. Welcome back to the sales podcast, man. How the heck are you? Dude, I am amazing. It's Monday. I love Mondays because it's first day. I can crush my week. Because you're a former SEAL and you're just weird, all right? But normal people don't like Mondays, man. What the hell's wrong with you? I'm trying to change that mindset, man. I'm trying to show them, man, we want to be proactive, not reactive. We get out there and we attack it. We set the tone for the entire week on Monday. Nice. Well, we, we met virtually a few years ago. You were helping me when I was doing my uh, SEAL week, getting ready for one of my uh, Tampa Bay Frogman swims. Uh, this year, I paused the January swim because I'm doing the July San Francisco Frogman swim. Nice. I was going to say that's a better choice, but then I heard San Francisco and uh, the water's cold up there no matter what. It's cold regardless. And, uh, and I, I miss Tampa Bay, so I, I'm going back next year. Maybe I'll just do both. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming on and helping me bring some awareness, raise some funds for that. But um, I will link to your first interview. But man, you've had uh, a few things going on since then. You came out with your book, right? The Trident, uh, The Forging and Reforging of a Navy SEAL Leader. Uh, you've launched your own podcast, JR Overcome Show, and you got another book coming out, right? That um, just before we hit record, you said you've got what the first draft due this week? That's right. So, uh, really excited. This is uh, definitely a business self help focused book, teaching people how to lead themselves out of crisis, failure, adversity, and through change, and really built around the principles of how we effectively lead ourselves, which directly translate into our ability to lead others. I mean, I don't, I don't know what makes you qualified for this. I mean, you, you, you did, a little stint in, <laughs> did a little stint in the military, swam in the water. You got shot a few times. I mean, does that really make you qualified to discuss this kind of stuff? I read a self-help book once. So <laughs> that's, uh, I kind of think, and, and I found this leadership card in a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> Those two things qualify me. Bam. And, and I once read a blog post, 37 ways to motivate yourself on Monday. Now I'm a keynote speaker, baby. All right. That's right. <laughs> Very nice. So let, let's do talk about that, though. I mean, you, your career was cut short, uh, but you, you overcame a tremendous amount of adversity. I remember, I remember reading uh, or listening to you the first time. You were saying people would look at you traveling, you know, through – through the airports, going for multiple surgeries. You were shot in the face and people were looking. You you had a shirt that said something like, what, I, I was shot seven times, you would have died? Yeah, yeah, a <laughs> little, little, little definitely in your face back then. But uh, that was the creation of Wounded Wear. And, yeah. uh, you know, kind of launched that and ran that company for almost 10 years. And we phased that down in 2018. And now I've fully shifted to the uh, leadership development, you know, team development, consulting, and now launching into 
both individual and uh, company coaching. Right. And I mean, most people, fortunately, will not be faced with such uh, dire situations to overcome. But we still feel pity for ourselves, right? I mean, how, how, how do people find it within themselves, you know, to pick themselves up, dust themselves off, stop feeling sorry for themselves, and go back and rebuild? You know, and this is really the core of my new book, Overcome, that'll come out in December. Uh, there's a lot of different things that need to happen to build that, what I call the overcome mindset. Um, really, one of the biggest first things that has to happen is you've got to gain a little bit of perspective. Uh, you have to understand, I mean, I don't know what it is about human beings, and I'm, I'm guilty. I don't care if you're a Navy SEAL, a police officer, if you're a doctor, if you're a teacher, uh, human beings operate the same way. And part of that path is a little bit of suffering. And we have this natural tendency that when things go wrong and we're going through suffering to just focus inward. When we focus on this struggle and strife that we're going through, perspective helps us to kind of look outside our world and come to realize, hey, I'm not the only one that's been through this. Not only that, there's plenty of other people that have been through much worse than I've been through. And if I can find other people that have been through something similar or even something worse, they can help motivate and inspire me to get out of that. So that's kind of one of the big things I try to explain to people. The second thing is we have a natural tendency when we have some sort of dire, catastrophic crisis event, a failure, we're going through a hard time, what I, what I call life ambushes. And, and the reason I do that is because I was fortunate enough to not only train on how to execute ambushes against the enemy uh, for many, many years as a SEAL. I also have the unique position that I found myself in the crosshairs of a very, very effective Al Qaeda enemy ambush. And uh, so I would definitely say I am an expert on the mechanics of an ambush. And the interesting thing about an ambush is both from the sending end of someone executing the ambush to the target, the individual that was on the ambush, the mechanics are the same. We are trying to pin someone down to that point of attack, what is called the X. And the goal is to pin that person down and utterly overwhelm them and get them to the point where they're unwilling to fight back because it's just so overwhelming in the moment. And I have to tell you, when I was in that ambush and you know I'm getting shot, my buddies are getting shot and it's just so overwhelming, there was that natural tendency. I make this correlation between life ambushes because when we have bad things happen, you know, and, and when I talk about the scale of bad things happening, they can be something as small as um, a failure of a relationship. And I, and I say small, cause I know a lot of people out there are like, Oh my God, you know, what are you talking about? I'm going through a divorce. There's divorce. There's nothing small about that. But as we start to go up in the level of catastrophic events in life, you know, um, business failure, you know, unexpected loss of a job when you're the primary breadwinner for your company, life-threatening illness or accident to you, life-threatening illness or accident to someone in your family, um, you know, the law, unexpected loss of a loved one, and then one of the biggest impacts I've seen is the unexpected loss of a child. Interestingly enough, the mechanics of this life ambush are the same. People have a natural tendency to hunker down on the X feel sorry for themselves, and they really struggle to move forward out of this point. We have a natural tendency to kind of look back at what we've lost instead of looking forward at where we need to go and how we need to move forward. Basically, how you survive an ambush is you have to get off the X. And this is really the foundational principle that I'm teaching. So number one is perspective. Number two is you have to go, you have to assess and start looking forward and say, I've got to get off the X. I can't just sit there because what's happened in the past is gone. You can't go back and change it, whether it's failure, crisis, loss, you know, massive adversity, whatever it is, you got to get off the X. Yeah. We had like, I don't know, one week of, of ground training at the Air Force Academy <laughs> You know, we're in the woods of Colorado, and it may have been part of SEER training. I don't even remember, but they they taught us that on an ambush. And I remember the the guy we had, some some staff sergeant, he made us scream out "Scunion Onion." <laughs> He's like, <laughs> when you get the ambush, basically that, that was our charge. 
you know, right. we would scream. And I just, it always stuck with me, attack the ambush. They want you to sit down. They want you to be scared. They're not ready for you to attack them. Right. Uh, and it just, I mean, I don't know, I was 18, 19 years old and it's always stuck with me, but it's easier said than done. I mean, I've never literally been shot at, so I don't know if I could run forward into it. I, I haven't been divorced. I have, I've lost many jobs. So from that standpoint, I could talk about, I've, I've lost businesses. Uh, and so, you know, I can relate just sitting around, nothing, nothing good happens when you're sitting still, huh? No, it pulls you deeper down onto the X. Uh, Matt, you know, I, I describe it a little bit like quicksand. The longer you sit on it, the deeper it'll pull you down and the harder it is to get off of it. Uh, and obviously, you know, if you look at timelines are relative. So if you've lost a child, I am not expecting someone to immediately get off the X. That's unrealistic. But they also are going to reach a point where they do have to move. They have to recognize so many people when they've had some catastrophic loss, uh, whether it's in business or whether it's in a personal relationship or a loss, um, they, they, they wait so long. They get sucked down with grief and then they start to create these false beliefs. Uh, I've seen this a lot with our gold star families that have lost a loved one. Um, they start to place these um, unrealistic expectations on themselves, like I'm not allowed to be happy, or they feel guilty to be happy because they've lost someone. I should not be happy because I should just be, you know, sad forever. And that's not true. So that's a little bit of helping them to get off the X, how to understand. And sometimes just like I needed help to get off that X of my ambush, so many people often need help to get off their ambush and, and move forward also. So you talk about, um, you know, attacking into the X, or I'm sorry, attacking into the ambush. You're absolutely right. But that's not always the best answer. Sometimes we just need to move away. Sometimes we need to find cover immediately because we know there's a place that we can relieve that pressure for a few minutes. So then we can make a better decision. And all of these things apply in life. They're all... Um, they're all relatable. Um, I have watched individuals, someone who has lost a child who, and we, this is the correlation that I make, they did attack back into, the, um, into that fire because those individuals actually went forth and started their own nonprofit to help other families that had lost a child. So now they had taken this amazing catastrophic event and it didn't define them or crush them it actually, it became their new purpose in life. And now they were helping other people and they were honoring their lost son because uh, of this life ambush, not in spite of it. Yeah, I remember it hit me years ago. Uh, the guy was the best man in my wedding and I was the best man in his wedding. And he was a pilot. And he, when we were still single, he put a clause in his insurance policy that we all got right. And pilots got them. And he said, he said, if he died, there was 10 grand set aside for like eight of us, there were eight or nine of us. So that were really tight. So for the eight of us remaining to fly to his funeral and throw a big ass party, you know, he's like, don't be crying over me. You know, I was like, I mean, that, that made an impact, you know, that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I, I like the, I mean, I like the message, right? It's like, don't cry over me, man, you know, get up and get after Cause you're right. And I, I've seen some of that in my five years of working with the Navy SEAL foundation, how some hold on to it, you know, hold on to the loss. I mean, how, how do you shake somebody loose? How do you, how do you knock those cobwebs out when, when somebody is holding on to that? So that loss, you know, the, a business, a, a family member, what have you. You, you got to show them it is a choice. And that is the reality of it. We own our thoughts. We own whether we want to be positive or negative and showing them that, look, it is OK. There are others that have been through loss that have gone forward. You know, whatever loss it is, uh, it doesn't define you. Your, your business failing, you making a major mistake in your life. That does not define you. And so many people allow it to define them. They choose for it to define them. They choose the negative aspect of whatever happened. And the reality is, it's just a choice within them to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to drive forward. I'm going to find happiness again. 
I, you know, it's okay to be happy and do good things and, and, and still honor the loss of somebody like a family member, you know, for instance, in our gold star community or somebody that's lost a child or somebody close, it's okay. They can still be happy. Um, and that's really what we have to convince them of. Life is nothing but a choice. Our brain and the way it functions, you know, we, we're going back to Monday and, and we have conditioned, so many people have conditioned themselves of, oh my God, it's Monday. I don't want Monday. I hate Mondays and all this other crap. That is a choice. You're choosing to allow this mindset that out there that Monday is a bad day. I choose that Monday is one of the greatest days of the week because it's one of the day, it's the first day of the week that I set the tone for the rest of my week. So if I project positivity, if I say these are the things that I'm doing to move the needle in the right direction, that's my choice. And it's setting me up for success. And I know it works because I've watched it happen, not with me, not just with me, but so many other people that I've worked with. How does someone get the courage to ask for help? Because I got to imagine, I mean, you had to have uh, help, right? And your, your recovery. Absolutely. You know, and that was a huge recovery, right? I mean, there's things you couldn't do for a long time. Uh, had to be humbling, had to be frustrating. Um, but I got to imagine as well, once you owned it and said, you know what? I need help. I may need help for a year, but I won't need help for 21 years. You know, how, how do we ask for help? So once again, it comes back to perspective, um, understanding that you're not the only person that's ever been through this. There's a natural tendency once again to focus directly on ourselves. And we think we're the only person in the world that's been through this. So we feel weak if we were to ask somebody for help, you know, oh, I'm too weak to do this on my own. So I don't want to reach out and, and admit that I have a problem. But, you know, there are over, what, what, uh, you know, what, 3 billion people in the world, I believe. No, uh, 7 billion. 7 billion. Thank you. I just exterminated 4 billion people. What a horrible person I am. <laughs> 7 billion people. So somebody else has been through something much worse and probably much more complicated than you are going through. And it doesn't make it any, any better for you going through it because we all live in our own personal hell. But if you have that perspective, you can understand, hey, I'm not the only one. And reaching out to ask somebody for help is critical. Now, how do we do that? How do we build that up? So one of the other things I'm teaching in this new book are five key areas that you have to lead yourself to be ready for these life ambushes. And, and if you lead yourself in these five areas, one, you're, you're going to be better balanced as a leader. Uh, not only just for yourself, most critically for yourself, but it's going to set you up for success with others around you. It's physical leadership, how we take care of ourselves physically. It's mental leadership, how we gather knowledge, how we find mentorship, how we get ourselves outside of our comfort zone, how we implement change. It's emotional leadership, how we manage our emotions, both positive and negative. Uh, and this is the biggest one where it comes to asking for help, social leadership how we build our rings of influence and the people we surround ourselves with. And those rings, that outermost ring, are your professional relationships. So those are our work relationships and the external influences of our life that you know, have an impact, but they're not quite friends. Within there, it becomes acquaintances. You know, People we know, this is people we're closer to at work or maybe in the community. And then it gets down to our close friends and then that innermost ring is our family. And so often here in America, I watch people that get this backwards. They get, they're so focused on work, they're focused on their outer ring, those work relationships, and they don't put the time and effort into their close friends and their family. And when these major ambushes happen, it gets so much more difficult if you've been putting all this time into those outer rings, instead of making sure you were putting time into the inner rings. If you've done this well, if you've been building these areas, especially in the social leadership realm, it makes it easier to reach out for help because you've built this. It makes it so much more difficult if you haven't put the time into those relationships. And now you're at ground zero. And not only are you struggling with the crisis you're going through, you're struggling with your own identity and making choices, positive choices in your life. Now you're really struggling trying to create 
momentum to get over the hurdle of who do I go ask for? Because I haven't done a really good job building these relationships up to, the, up to this point in my life. Right. How do you, how do you develop a, a mentality of, you know, embracing the suck, right? People that, you know, we see on TV, we, we see buds, right? We, we see how hard it is, you know, three weeks, you know, hell week really sucks. And, and then uh, they finish and then you get your trident. Oh, it's probably easy after that. Like you get to shoot and jump out of airplanes. Uh, but everyone I've spoken to are like, buds was nothing. It got, it's way shittier after buds. And people like, they can't fathom that because they see so much misery on TV in, in buds. But how do you toughen yourself? Because most people typically we want to coast, right? We achieve something, get to the peak and then, that I'm here. But the reality is like, we can never rest, right? There's always an enemy. There's entropy, right? We're going to get yep. better. We're going to get more competition. We got to keep pushing. How, how do, how do you develop that mental toughness to embrace the suck? So if you look at the most elite people in the world, Olympic athletes, I mean, your top, top elite business people in the world, uh, Bill Gates, um, uh, you know, Steve Jobs, people like that. The sales whisperer. I, I know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. The sales whisperer. That's what I was trying oh, to get off man. my tongue. Come and it's just Come stuck on. in my brain. <laughs> the elite people in the world are constantly pushing themselves. So I have a uh, theory I talk about called the pyramid of change. The pyramid of change breaks it into four different levels of where people are in their lives. The very bottom level and the smallest level is people who really put forth no effort. They have no inner drive. They have no inner fire. They could care less whether they're successful or not. And most of them don't hold a job very long. Uh, a lot of them, if uh, they're over 30, they're living in their parents' basement still. At the top end of the pyramid is the burnout zone. And a lot of us, I am guilty of this. I will live at this level if I'm not careful. I think I can do everything. I'm just grinding along. But the reality is I'm so overextended I can't function at that level for long and people will burn out. People will make mistakes. Uh, so you can't function in here. Most people live in the next two categories, right in the middle. And the vast majority of people in the world live in the uh, second tier. This is the comfort zone. And you said it, we have a natural tendency to achieve a level of success. And then we just want to coast. We want to, Hey, I hit my success point. I hit the status quo. Yay for me. And they just want to coast along. The problem with that, just like you said, entropy occurs. We start to fall off. We start to get lazy. Uh, and, and you get soft, to be perfectly honest. The level above that is the zone of discomfort. Elite performers, like the sales whisperer, operate in that area where they're in the comfort zone and then they identify a new goal. It's not some monster goal. It's an attainable goal that they can achieve in a specific amount of time. And when they start pushing up to achieve that goal, it pushes them up into that zone of discomfort. Why? Because change is hard. Doing new things is hard. Grinding out new goals is hard. And at some point though, you're going to achieve that goal. And when you've done it for, if you've done it for a while, suddenly that new goal that was in the zone of discomfort drifts into the zone of comfort. It now gets easy. And at that point, you have to set a new goal. Elite performers are in an endless loop going from the comfort zone to the zone of discomfort, comfort zone to the zone of discomfort. That is how they maintain these elite levels of success. They're constantly pushing back and forth. They know they can't operate in the zone of discomfort all the time. They definitely know they can't operate in the burnout zone. So that's what they're constantly doing. That is how the overcome mindset is forged. I tell people the easiest way to build it the very first way, and it's beneficial to you because it goes back to my first level of the Pentagon, is physical leadership. Get out and work out. Push yourself. Working out is probably the simplest and easiest thing you can do where you can get outside your comfort zone. And, and it's all up here. It starts to build this mindset of, oh, I endured that. I made it in this run. I lost this weight. I lifted five more pounds than I did before. These are little mental victories. And these are things that we had to push through that discomfort to suddenly it becomes comfortable. And then from there, we start laying it out in other goals and areas of our lives. 
Yeah, so true. I'd gotten kind of comfortable and um my buddy uh you know John Doolittle? Yeah, I know John. So so I went to the academy with him and he was some sicko cross commission in the Navy. And what 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 was wrong with him? But anyway, he's like, Yeah, you should do this swim with me. I'd never done an open water swim in my life. And I signed up for a 5K swim, right? Um, I remember, dude, I panicked for 30 minutes. When I'm like, literally, I'm thinking, I'm literally going to die. I got a wife. I got all my kids. Uh, they're going to be orphans, and, and she's going to be a widow because I'm stupid, and I'm swimming. I have no business. <laughs> like, what the hell? And, man, once I just shake, shook those cobwebs off, like, I was so proud, right? I was so happy to but to even have a goal for six months i trained leading up to it and it gave me something to do that was different you know and after getting through the the freak out um i mean you're so right and now i'm doing jujitsu been doing that for two years that's it, awesome you know i'm sore i got hurt all the time my shoulder hurts both hands hurt knees hurt I'm like but it gives me something. I know I'm alive because I'm hurting. <laughs> yep. And, and jujitsu is such a great thing. I did uh, Jocko's podcast not that long ago. and We were talking about that. Uh, I, I myself want to get back into it. I haven't yet. I've been busy right now, but it's one of the things here shortly. It's one of my goals in the next couple of months. And jujitsu is so good, you know, because not only is it physical, it is mental. Oh, yeah. It is, it's a chess game. It's sucking up it's the so discomfort mental. when when you've got somebody bigger and better than you on top of you and they're pushing all their weight down on you and you're trying to breathe and you're trying to avoid, you know, getting that arm locked out or wrist locked out or whatever move they're going to try and put you in and you're trying to counter it. I mean, that's awesome, man. That is life and strategy right there. I recommend everybody should study, study martial arts. I mean, I think it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not so much the big guys. I expect the loose of the big guys. It's it's the twenty one year old, one hundred seventy pound kid that tunes you up two or three times in a six minute session. You're going, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a worthless human being. I should be a zero belt. Just give me what's under a white belt. <laughs> <laughs> I want the translucent belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worthy. <laughs> Oh man. All right. So, you know, and, and so, so you mentioned Jocko, he's, he's talked about this uh, a lot that, and, and I kind of experienced first time I, I saw uh, Doolittle after, um, after we graduated, he was already on the team. So it was, it was years later. It was, it was 12 years later, around 2004. And he said, yeah, meet me at a bar. He was up at the defense language up in Monterey. He's like, yeah, I'm meeting some other team guys. So I'm expecting to see these, these superhuman dudes, right? Like, like Hulk Hogan. And cause we all have this, this vision, this idea. And these dudes right. were little like, like me. Yeah. Like you, man. I yeah. mean, we, we got a seven, I'm we seven a frame. I'm seven foot one and three twenty. <laughs> and these in were my, like, in, in my mind, <laughs> <laughs> these were little guys. Right. And, and Jocko talked about, it. he's like, these elite athletes usually fail. It's, it's the guys that can just grind it out because it's mental. Yep. And, and I forget who I had on. One, one of the team guys, uh, I think it was Bruce, um, he said, yeah, it's real easy to be a SEAL. Don't quit. Right? I was like, yeah, I never really thought about that way. <laughs> but, but literally, I mean, obviously, as long as you can pass the physical, literally anybody could become a SEAL if they don't quit. Uh, and, and that's true in life, right? Anybody can be an entrepreneur. Anybody in sales could be the top salesperson at their company. Uh, anybody could be a great husband, a great wife, but, but do we have, like, we have these false images, right? I can never be, I'm not that big and tough. I'm not a world Olympic swimmer. I can never make the teams or whatever, but it's, how do we get people out of, how do we burst those myths? And say, you got it in you to be the best. You just got to want to, right? Once again, I, I think it comes back to choice. It comes back to that overcome mindset. Most, some people quit because of the pain and misery in the moment. There's no doubt about that. You know, they're unwilling to grind through the discomfort. But the vast majority of times that people quit, it's because they've convinced themselves it has nothing to do with the pain and discomfort, and it has everything to do with that little voice that tells them you cannot do it. 
you are not an entrepreneur. You are not a jujitsu guy. You're not a Navy SEAL. You're not a business guy. You're not a speaker. You're not a doctor. Whatever it is, whatever lies we want to tell ourselves, that's why people quit. It is that little voice inside your head. When I went through Ranger School and I had made all those mistakes and I, and I failed and I started to quit Ranger School, I didn't quit because Ranger School was hard. I was quitting because I had convinced myself that I no longer had what it took to be a SEAL leader. And, and that's what I believed in that moment. I had, I had planted this big, dark seed of doubt inside my head. And thank God I had a leader who believed in me, who you know, shook some sense into me and convinced me that it's never too late. No matter how far down at rock bottom you are, people will follow you if you give them a reason to. And that's what he told me, which was the most succinct, sound leadership advice I've ever been given. And to this day, is still the best leadership advice I've ever been given. And that moment forward, it ignited a flame of hope within me. And, uh, and I tell people, don't listen to that little voice inside your head. As long as you have a realistic goal, you can achieve it. You know, I mean, within the, the, the realm of reason, if you, you know, if you're like me and you're a 5'8 guy who weighs 170 pounds, you know, if I tell you my goal is to be a lineman in the NFL and I'm 44 years old, chances are that's not going to happen. There's no amount of steroids and HGH on the planet that will get me up competitive against alignment. But if we have realistic goals, if someday I say I want to be the sales whisperer, I mean, you know, it's a lofty goal, but I can do it. As long as I convince myself that, hey, man, you can do this no different than Wes can. You know, anybody out there could do what I'm doing. Go find some things that, you know, you fall, you failed forward, have some successes in life, work on your speaking abilities. You too can get out there and deliver an amazing message. Look at Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a perfect example of a guy who really came from nowhere. He had had some hard times in his life. He spent this whole period of time basically reinventing himself. And then he got out there and delivered this amazing message of self-realization and self-empowerment. And now he is the most recognized motivational speaker in the world. So you, the only thing stopping anyone from accomplishing greatness in this life is you. Yep. I remember old Zig Ziglar would say, you know, a, a positive thinking, that motivational thinking, it, it won't help you do anything, but it will help you do anything you do better. You know, so stop that stinking thinking. That's right. Well, man, thanks for coming on the show. Where, where should we send people? I mean, your, your, your second book will be out in December. Your first book's already available, right? The Trident. Uh, we right. mentioned that. Uh, send them to Amazon. Send them to your website. Where, where do you want them to go? Well, if they'd like a signed copy of The Trident, I would recommend they go to jasonredmond.com. And okay. uh, from there, you can get a signed copy. Make sure you write in the notes if you want me to personalize it to you. Because if you don't write anything... I don't know if it's for you or if it's somebody else. So I don't right. personalize it if there's no notes. Right. Uh, through my website, we also have our new coaching platform that's getting ready to launch next week, the Overcome Army. So it is a group coaching program for individuals who are looking for positive motivation, weekly classes on leadership, resiliency, teamwork, structure, goal setting. And you are in a private group with like-minded individuals who are trying to make a difference. And then on uh, social media, you can find me on Facebook at Jason Redman. And I am uh, big time on Instagram, Jason Redman WW, and Twitter, Jason Redman WW. Very cool. So the, the Overcome Army, is that, uh, is that live now? Uh, it will launch next week. Okay, cool. So, yep, it will and launch it, next week. Is it an ongoing thing or is it like a, like a six week or 12 week? Nope. It is an ongoing thing. Yeah, cool. once you sign up, the once a week class and uh, question and answers after the class. And then also there is the ability to interact with me, of course, in that, uh, in that private group. Right. And then uh, I'm seeing, uh, see you on Instagram. I mean, you're doing a lot more keynote speaking now, right? I am ramping up. So definitely getting out there and just trying to provide tremendous value to companies, you know, help them build better leaders and build better structure within their company, within their people, build better teams, teaching them how to get people off the X. Uh, man, it's just amazing how many people, when you tell them that analogy, whether they're in a company or in their own individual life, go, Oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been sitting on the X I'm, you know, I'm X, Y, Z. And uh, it's been, it's been really exciting.
Right. Very cool. So if they want to hire you for, for speaking, that's on your website as well, I imagine. Yep. Yep. Right there at the front of the website it says book now, or if you'd like to see me in action right on the front of the website is a great new video we just put together of uh, uh, a bunch of really motivational speaking clips from a bunch of different events I've done. Yeah. Very cool. All right, man. Jason Redman, all the way from Virginia, baby. Thanks for coming on the sales podcast again. It's been great. Yeah, man. Wes, thanks so much. You know, shout out to the Air Force, saving my life. So <laughs> I love you guys. I won't, I won't knock you anymore. My whole military career, I knocked you down and I can't do it anymore. I, I got I to gotta salute my Air Force brethren. I wouldn't be here without you. Amen, baby. We can pick on each other, but only because we love each other. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right, man. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, brother. So how are you handling life's ambushes? Huh? You've been shot seven times. I mean, come on now. Granted, when you're faced with something that extreme, you have no choice but to focus on it. But are you using that as an excuse as to why you're not digging deeper? What is your perspective? What is your outlook on suffering? Is everything supposed to be just peachy king? I love these people that talk about you know, this, uh, what do they call it, resurrection theology, or I forget the exact terminology, but if you want to be like Jesus, pick up your cross. You want to lose weight? You're probably going to have some hunger pains. You want to get in better shape? You're going to have some soreness from pumping iron. You want to get better at jujitsu? Your whole dang body's going to hurt. Okay? Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly until you master it. And while you do it poorly, you will be suffering. It will be humbling. It will be frustrating, but stay after it. That's why you need to have a good team around you. I could not train this hard alone as I do with the team in my jiu-jitsu class. I got better results when I was lifting weights with a friend than when I was doing it alone. So what are you doing to surround yourself with people that make you better? Or are you surrounding yourself with enablers? You get to choose. I love what Jason said. You know, Don't place unrealistic expectations on yourself like, I'm not worthy of ever being happy again since ABC happened to me. Whatever. Little pity party. Give me a break. You're better than that. you got to move beyond that. And maybe you got to pick up the phone and call someone like me to slap some sense into you. I'm happy to do it. It's not because I don't like you. It's because I do. I want you to succeed. You succeeding does not take away or hinder my ability to succeed. Okay? It's not a pie that we're all with limited amounts. That we're all just fighting for our own peace. Nope. This is a cumulative exponential pie. We can all get more of a bigger piece of pie. Find someone to work with. I've hired a new coach recently. Jumped in, knee deep, like a like my sales training program I bought in 2006. And it's funny as I go through it, it's a lot of it is a lot of new things, new spin, new outlook on things. New for me at least. The, the examples are new, but a lot of the approaches, are the things I've always done, things I've always taught. So it's good to be reminded that I'm on the right track, that I am good enough, that I am worthy of raising my prices. Okay? Nobody is immune from that. So surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with folks that push you. And you know what? Invest in expensive programs and just demand results. Okay? I'm not saying get something expensive just because it's expensive. That's craziness. But... You need to invest in something that makes you focus, okay? I find myself spending this kind of money. I'm gobbling up everything he produces. I'm active in the group because I need an ROI on this investment. When you spend a few dollars on something, it's easy to blow it off and not touch it. That doesn't help you or the producer of that content, okay? And, but there are people out there that just want to sell something and to hell with them. Okay, go get your money back or just write it off and invest in something that will help you grow. 
okay, and really stretch. So I've been talking about, you know, I'm reviving the um, 30 day sales growth. I'm looking at how to combine things and actually going through this program I'm going through. I'm seeing the power of bringing things into Facebook with their units and different modules. It's crazy, you know, and I always want to be a product of the product. I'm looking for ways to teach you how to simplify and streamline, reduce your costs, keep more of your own money, uh, meet the customers where they are. Okay. So check out the 30 day sales growth. I'm still putting the finishing touches on a mastermind, but for now you can get the 30 day sales growth, 30 day sales growth.com. It's the original training I created. I've updated it and I've added in the make every sale program and you're going to like it. And it is way too underpriced, but I'm, I have raised the price already, but I'm doing it strategically because I want to get a few folks in it. Uh, and because I am retooling it, if you find an error somewhere, a broken link, you'll tell me and you won't be mad because you've paid so little. So jump in and uh, you'll always have access to that content, even as I raise the prices. All right. So check that out. 30 salesgrowthcom As I mentioned at the top of the show, Check out my new sponsor. If you are in sales and you're looking for a better job and you don't want to do the monster route, if you want to make sure your current employer doesn't know that you're looking, okay, my friends at Rainmakers have a very unique model, technology, system, process, a little bit of all the above that you're going to like. And if you're a company and you're hiring, you need to check this out because they release candidates at certain intervals Okay, and you've got to scoop them up quickly. So you better be ready. But the benefit is the candidates are pre screened, they're higher caliber, higher quality, they're more motivated, and you spend less money acquiring them. So check it out, the saleswhisper.com slash recruit. As always, thanks for listening. I'll go sell something. <laughs>